in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Harkins as Betty Anderson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington. James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Elizabeth Walker as Carolyn Russell. And also starring Barbara Rush as Marsha Russell. Russell and Lou Miles have just agreed on a way to handle the false rumor that has linked them together. But their agreement was reached in front of Doctor's Hospital, in full view of Karen's father, Fred. I saw you with Lou Miles. I confess I was talking to him. It wasn't just a casual conversation. You're twisting things. You're reading into things what you want to read into them. I was talking to Lou in broad daylight in front of a public building. You know what I mean. You don't seem to realize why you're deliberately seeking out this relationship. That's why I'm here, Toad, to talk it out with you. You and I have always found it easy to communicate with each other. Lou and I have nothing. There is nothing between us. Even friendship is too strong a word for our relationship. I see. That's why you were having such an intense, such an intimate conversation out there. We were because you're barely friends. We were talking about Jeff and about his rotten lie and about your ridiculous acceptance of it. I don't want you to see him, period. Well, that's not only silly, it's impossible. Because this is a small town, we go to the same school. It makes no difference. We're in the same classes. You don't have to be seen with him. How can I convince you that you're wrong? I was hurt and confused when you and Mother were divorced. But I adjusted to that. You're the one causing the trouble now. Mother doesn't believe any of this. Perhaps I can see things a little more clearly than your mother can. But then she's not to blame. I've no doubt Mike Rossi has a lot to do with the way she thinks these days. That's what this is all about, isn't it? You need someone who understands you, what you've been through. I know you, Carolyn, better than anyone. I always have. I'm not Rossi. I'm not some substitute father who tries to step in and take over. Who doesn't really care one way or another what's right or wrong for you. You're using it, that stupid lie Jeff told you to get you off his back. If you can make it seem desperate enough, no matter what Dr. Rossi or anyone else says, Mother will start to believe it, and somehow you'll get her back. Who put that idea into your head, Rossi? Why can't you believe me? and stop pretending to believe Jeff's lie. Carolyn? It won't do any good. You can't break them up. She loves him. They love one another. And they are going to get married, and you can't stop them. Your mother's making a mistake. She'll never be happy with him. Can't you see that? If you love her, why can't you allow her to be happy? Hey, they look great, don't they? I heard a noise. Yeah, well, I tried to be quiet. Funny, usually I get nervous about noises in the house, especially when we're all in bed. But mm. I heard a noise, and I knew it came from the kitchen, and I knew it was you. <laughs> Vicky, I wanted you to help me launder the curtains yesterday because I wanted you to feel that you really belonged here. <laughs> yeah, I know that, Mrs. Miles, and uh, I appreciate that. 
But I didn't expect you to crawl out of bed at this hour and hang the things yourself. You know? All that stretching in your condition might not be good, you know? Yeah, but I wanted to. You want to belong here? Yeah. I kind of dig the whole scene. It's uh, clean and it's straight and I like it. Saturday, they're having a month-end sale, and I've had my eye on these Cape Cod cottons. They're beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah. I think I'm getting tired of looking at these. <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of like them. Well, uh, Vicky, I will buy you some clothes, some maternity clothes, because your dresses must be getting a little tight. Uh, yeah, well, I don't want you spending your money on me, Mrs. Miles. Now, don't you worry about that. I, um... I mean, just to live in a house like this... I didn't know our people live like this. Yeah, well, I better get started with the shopping. Well, the stores aren't even open oh, yet. Oh, the list we made out last night. Yes, but... And uh, I have to stop by the post office. You wanted me to get um, these two registered for Dr. Miles, right? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Vicki. Yeah? You're a big help to me. Thank you, Mrs. Miles. Um, I really appreciate that. So Vicky outside. And you're back so soon. Anything wrong? No, no, I took the early flight. Came back with Dr. Harding. Oh, and he did go to the convention. Honey, please, did you find out anything in New York? Of course, of course I did. Well, Harry, please, tell me. Uh, well, first of all, I saw this private detective, and oh boy, did he ever lay it on me. $300 in front. $300? Anyway, there's nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing. Harry, do you really mean that, or are you just trying to spare me? No, didn't turn up a thing. Of course, the detective's still working on it. Anyway, I went to see your sister. She's fine, sends her love. And I had a nice chat with Dr. Corrigan. He thinks Lou has a fine mind. I even talked with some of the students. Nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. Honey, we have been through a lot together. I've got a right to know everything. What's the matter? You think I'm hiding something from you, honey? Oh, look, I know it sounds strange, the way Lou's been behaving, my chasing around New York and all, but... Honestly, nothing. Nothing at all. You're an outsider. Do you think the students would have told you if there were something? Or because you're Dr. Miles, would they be simply... Yes, Dr. Miles. No, Dr. Miles. Your son's a good boy, Dr. Miles. No. Yeah, deliberately hiding. You know how these kids stick together? Honey, I know a put on when I see one. But what about Vicky? Did you locate any of her people? No, uh, just a cousin or two. Father, mother? No, just a cousin or two, that's all. <sighs> Harry, what about you? Do you still have any reservations? Or do you have the feeling that nothing happened? Honey, I can't afford to feel otherwise. Neither can you. Thank God. <sighs> you get these ugly suspicions, and they build, and they build, and you, you get to thinking, well, he must be guilty. <laughs> Thank God. Now, 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 come on. <laughs> Just a couple of overly concerned parents, that's all. I like to see it as misguided goodwill, and I hope you can, too. <laughs> hey. Hey, you know something? I must be in the wrong house. Everybody's up so early. It's good to see you home, Dad. Oh, what got you up so early? <laughs> Come on, Mom. Oh, I just wanted to hug you. Well, boys can take a lot of leaving alone. Right, Lou? <laughs> right. Uh, could I talk to you? Sure. How about some breakfast? Good, good. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I have to talk to you, Dad. Well, had a good trip anyway. Yeah, but before you say anything about it, be before you say a word... Look. Now, wait a minute. I wasn't planning to tell you anything about it. As a matter of fact, there's nothing to tell. Strictly routine, that's all. Uh, you mean... Uh, just a lot of doctors got together to uh, talk about new stuff? New scientific stuff? That's right. <laughs> well, that sounds kind of dull. Well, it's never dull. Not when you're talking about the human body, how it functions and how it doesn't function.
Well, look at me, man. What's going on, Jeff? Well, I've been meaning to talk to you, Lou, honest, but, uh, well, I missed seeing you over at Jim today. Why is that? I was there. Oh, this thing's really been bugging me. Bugging you? Bugging you, man. This thing is all over town. Oh, yeah. I mean, even old man Wyland in Botany looked at me this morning like he wanted to come across that desk with a rope in his hand at me. I don't understand, man. I thought we were tight. I mean, your mother turned me on to a German potato pancakes. Yeah, Lou, I know that. But I was being crowded, crowded by your old man. He threatened to cave my head in over Carolyn, and Lou, I believe he'd do it. So you decided to pin this phony rap on me? Not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Look, I'm afraid of this guy, and he had me cornered. I haven't been able to reach Carolyn lately. She's, uh... Well, I, I don't know. It's... It's just hard to explain. I think you better, man. Your name just popped into my mind. Popped into your mind? That sounds wild, but that's the way it happened. I swear it. This guy was pressing me, and... Well, your name just... Popped into your mind. Why? I don't know why. You're a liar. Why me, Jeff? Why me? Well, I guess it's because I saw you and Carolyn coming out of the bike shop together. Man, we were on our way to the lab, and you know it. Wait a minute. Now, all I said was that I had you two fixed in my mind. Why? I guess deep down, I'm a very jealous person, that's all. Maybe I just imagine things. Imagine what? I mean, what was going on in your head, man? Now, look, I'm trying to level with you. Now, maybe not enough was going on inside of my head. Yeah, maybe that was the problem. I'm talking about you and me, man. Now, we grew up together, at least these last few years. Yeah, man, I know. So if nothing was going on in your head, then maybe it was just instinct. Yeah, maybe it was just plain old instinct. Now, what I want to know, old friend, is how come this instinct? Hey, Lou, what are you looking for? Well, anything that'll explain it, man. Well, if you want me to say that all my life I've had this thing about black people and I used you to hit on it, I just can't say that because it isn't true. Oh, really? Will you straighten this out, man? I mean, you straighten it out. You owe me that.